Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a great game and fantastic sequel, and its soundtrack already received praise from many. But what I want to show you today is something interesting I discovered around it. How it communicates the story of the game using a simple yet very powerful tool, leitmotif. Now if you watch Gamescore fanfare then you've heard this word a lot, but if you haven't, a leitmotif is a melody or rhythm associated with a theme or character. Composers can use leitmotif to remind us of previous events, or build links to other characters, or show someone's character development, in general to tell the story of a game, movie, or opera more powerfully. And this is exactly what Gareth Coker did. Because after all, a good soundtrack sounds good, but a great one actually links with the world and the story, or gameplay, cohesively. And sometimes the music can even convey something that can't be told through words. We saw this most notably in Minecraft's soundtrack, where the quiet and ambient music perfectly sets the mood for solitary exploration in a foreign land. So, without further ado, here's how Ori and the Will of the Wisps communicates its story through its music. Spoilers ahead. To start things off, let's talk about Ku's theme. Ku is the little owlet that you rescue and that is your friend. She is the last remaining child of Kuro, the last game's main villain. This is her theme the first time you hear it. She cannot fly, however, and you can hear this theme several times descending at the end, just like her. But then, when you attach Kuro's feather to her and she finally takes off, the theme stays hovering until the next repetition plays. And then, when you fall down from the sky, the old theme plays again. This is an excellent example of slightly changing a leitmotif to account for changes in the story. When you finally reunite with Ku, finding her in the silent woods, you're confronted by Shriek, a huge bird thing with legs who could be called the main antagonist of the game. You have seen her before, but this is the first time you actually hear her theme. Interestingly, her theme is reused in one of the final sections of the game, the Decayed Spirit Willow. This compares it to the decay and corruption of Shriek. But here's what's really interesting, and what originally inspired me to make this video. Ku's theme and Shriek's theme are really similar. very interestingly relates the two characters. You later see that Shriek was once a powerless little creature as well, and back then was quite similar to Ku. However, Shriek has fallen completely into corruption, which is shown even more by her theme playing lower the second time. There's something else that confirms this. After you escape Shriek and are reunited with Ku, you hear both themes played simultaneously. This perfectly shows the two characters' similar histories. Shriek was excluded as a child, and Ku fell into her forest. Both were alone and far away from help in their own ways. There was something else, though, that caught my attention in the reunification. 
After you meet and Shriek walks away, you hear this. This is the main theme of the game, and the only other time you hear it in this form is in the main menu. Reusing this theme is such an unexpected but powerful way of conveying their unification. You're together again, just like when you first started the game. There's some other themes would change slightly to suit the story. Moldwood depths have this scary and unsettling leitmotif. But after defeating Mora and lifting the darkness, it changes to this more tragic sounding one. When Qualok turns against you, because he's controlled by some evil thing, you hear his theme but warped in a strange way, reflecting the weird way he's behaving. And then, when you end up fighting, his theme takes an evil turn. Finally, when he dies, his theme is fragmented. And that's not to even mention all of the instances of themes from the original Ori game. Finally, I wanted to talk in detail about one of the most simple, yet most powerful uses of leitmotif, when you meet Qualok, the guardian of the marsh. When you first enter his hollow, it feels cold and dangerous. And Qualok's theme... feels ominous and a bit scary. But when you do finally meet him, it begins with these drums and tremolos. Which almost make you think that there will be a surprise boss fight or chase sequence. But then you hear his theme, loud and clear, and with the final chord changed to a power chord. This is such a small change that I'm in wonder at how effective it is. You suddenly see that while his power is huge, as shown by the loudness of the theme, 
He is peaceful and majestic and uses it only for good. He is a king not because he's big or powerful, but just by his nature. All of that conveyed by a slightly changed version of the theme. I actually found myself re-listening to the same fragment over and over and getting shivers every time. However, I do feel that this reveal could be made even more dramatic. If the characters you meet before Qualloc spoke more of his power and less or even not at all of his kindness, maybe some could even doubt him saying that they don't know what he's doing or that they're not sure if he'll help you. It's true that while the writing in this game is fine, it isn't quite at the same level as the music or art, and sometimes, like here, it clashes with the feelings the music is trying to evoke, in my opinion. So that's how Gareth Coker reused and changed leitmotifs from all around Ori and the Will of the Wisps, as well as Ori and the Blind Forest, to enhance the story and soundtrack. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope some of you developers out there will keep this in mind when making your next game. Think of a soundtrack not as just some music playing in the background, but as an important element working toward making the game a more cohesive piece of art, something that elevates a story to the next level.